Hello, today we're going to have a quick look at some power series and specifically what we have is a function f of x which is defined as the sum where i goes from 0 up to infinity of some coefficient alpha i times x to the power of i, right? So this is basically just, you know, alpha 0, sorry, it is alpha 0 plus alpha 1 x plus alpha 2 x squared plus alpha 3 x cubed, and so on, all the way up to infinity. So I'm just using a concise notation, uh, this summation notation, to write that out. Okay, um, so we have that, and we also have a similarly defined function g of x, except the coefficients are beta i instead of alpha i. And what we want to know is, if we multiply f and g together, right, to get a new function, f of x times g of x, and we want to write that as a power series, where the coefficients are gamma, what do these gamma i coefficients have to be? Okay, so that's the question we're trying to answer. So, uh, to do that, let's just take our definitions of f and g, right? And we can, so we can just write this, right, as the sum where i goes from 0 to infinity of alpha i x to the i, okay? Um, and then we multiply that by g, and I'm going to use a different index here, right, to keep it separate from this i index that I use. I'm going to call the index for the summation for g, I'm going to call that j. Okay, so we've got the sum where j goes from 0 to infinity of beta j times x to the power of j. Okay, so what we can do, actually, is just put the two sums at the front. Okay, so we have sum where i goes from 0 to infinity of the sum where j goes from 0 to infinity of, well, we just got alpha i, so alpha i times beta uh, j, and then we've got x i, sorry, x to the i, x to the j, and because those two powers of x are just multiplied together, we can add the indices, right, so that just becomes x to the i plus j. Okay, and remember that is supposed to be equal to um, the sum where i goes from 0 to infinity of gamma i x to the i. Right, so we want to express these gamma i's in terms of the alphas and the betas, and the way to do that is just by basically comparing coefficients. So we are going to compare the coefficients um, of some specific power of x, and let's say x to the power of k. Right, so on the right hand side of this equation up here, right, the coefficient of x to the power of k is just gamma k, right? Because well, you can see that immediately by looking by looking at this summation on the right. Okay. So gamma k, right, so k is just some specific number. Um, and what is that gonna be in terms of the alphas and the betas? Well, um, as long as this index i plus j, as long as that's equal to k, right, then we care about that specific term because we're comparing all of the terms that have the same um, same index that, that x is raised to. Okay, so basically what we want to do is sum over all of the possible pairs of i and j such that i plus j is equal to k, right? So we do that and we just sum up alpha i b to j, right? because we just want all the terms where i plus j is equal to k, because we're comparing coefficients of x to the k. Right, so um, let's just take a moment to think about how we can write this in a slightly more approachable way. Right, so we want all the values where i plus j is k, so let's just think about these possible pairs of i and j, um, and start to get a feel for what this means. So if i is 0, for instance, because i and j has to be k, sorry, because i plus j has to be k, if i is 0, then j has to be k, right, so that they add up to k. Similarly, if i is 1, if we want them to add up to k, j has to be k minus 1, and then we can just keep going, right, i is 2, j is k minus 2, and so on. And so we just keep going, right, and until we get to i we get to i equals k, in which case j has made it all the way down to zero. Okay, and then if we make i any bigger, then it's going to be k plus one, um, and so we can't possibly add something onto that and get k. Right. So these are like these are all of the possible pairs of i and j that we're interested in, and so what we're essentially doing is we're taking um, i. Okay, we're taking i 
going from zero up to k, right? As you can see from this list, list here, it starts from zero, goes up to k, and we're taking alpha i and uh, multiplying it by beta j, but remember, j is basically just um, k minus i. So j is k minus i, which you can see from this list here. Okay, so um, equivalently, let's just write this um, using um, using some different indices, right? So if we want to say um, gamma i, right? So gamma i, just relabeling the indices, so k is going to turn into an i, and let's turn the i into a j. So gamma i is going to be sum from, well, the sum where j goes from 0 to i, okay, uh, of alpha j beta um, i minus j. So there you go, we've expressed the coefficients um, alpha i, sorry, gamma i in terms of the alphas and the betas. So just to get it maybe a bit more of a feel for what this actually means, um, so for example, uh, gamma zero is simply going to be alpha zero um, times beta zero, right? Okay, gamma one. So if, well, let's think about the terms that we're going to have in this sum, right? So when j is zero, we get alpha, sorry, yeah, we get alpha zero, um, and then we get beta one, right? Because i minus j is one minus zero, but then we also have to add on um, the term where j is one, and so we get alpha one um, beta zero, okay? And let's consider one more. So gamma two, we are going to get um, alpha zero beta two, okay? Then the term where j is one is gonna be alpha one beta one, and then when j is two, we get alpha two um, beta zero. Okay, so there you go, that's that's the pattern. It kind of sometimes helps to write out some of these specific terms to get, get a feeling for what this um, you know, slightly intimidating summation actually means. So there you go, that's how you can express a product of two power series as a single power series.